coming up on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. From kid on a tricycle to man behind the wheel. And I always dreamed about when I was a kid that I would get a Nova like my brothers. Hey, that thing got a Hemi? And it's probably the first or second year they had the Hemis. Sweet. And some guys aren't too picky. I wanted to get something with doors and a roof and windows. Plus. The customer said, let's go that next step. Since you can't find it aftermarket, what do we do? We talk classical glass in Under the Hood. Hey, what a beauty. I had two of them when I was younger. Congratulations, sir. Cruise in, presented by RK Motors Charlotte, starts right now. Hey everybody, welcome to Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. I'm Jeff Phelps. And we're at a place we've heard an awful lot about. We're at the 10th annual Blue Suede Cruise at Summit Motorsports Park in Norwalk, Ohio. Fabulous classic cars, not only on display, but running up and down the strip as well. Bob, I love the look of your Ford Econoline van, but I I'm having a hard time placing it. Growing up in the 70s, it almost looks like the 70s van, but you look inside, it has a completely different design to it. What were you thinking with this thing? Well, uh, just like I say, uh, I was looking for a van to haul my parts around for my service stations, and uh, this one just showed up. So, because it was easy to be better in a, in a, than a wagon, because it's taller and get more stuff in it. And I say then in about 76, I joined the van club, that's when I started fixing it up. What was the inspiration for the design you have with it now, Bob, both okay. inside and out? Okay, I was gonna get some body work done on a friend of mine at a body shop in Elyria. And he come to me and he says, uh, how about me flaming? He was just starting in the flaming business. Uh, he had pinstriped it before for me. He says, I'll just repaint it and, and flame it. I says, I can't afford your flame jobs because it was pretty expensive time. He says, if you buy the material, now he says, it won't be cheap. He says, we'll use a lot of masking tape, <laughs> a lot. And he says, I use nothing but good tape. And he says, I'll put the flames on. So for advertisement, for me, I says, fine. So that's how it got started. That was in 1995. How about the interior? That's not typical van. Well, that was typical back in the 70s uh, when you went to van ends. Because we slept in it. That was our, our camper, and that's why the bed's in there, and uh, the interiors, we all either, either did paneling or we carpeted all the way up. <laughs> How does it feel driving down the road and having the engine sitting right next to you? Well, it, sometimes it gets a little bit warm. Uh, it, it's, it takes a little, a little getting used to sitting next to that windshield with nothing in front of me. <laughs> Yeah, that could be a little disconcerting, I would yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. And especially knowing all the good stuff sitting right next to you. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. How much have you enjoyed this over the years, Bob? I've really enjoyed it. Yeah. We've uh, <clears throat> we've traveled quite a bit to just regular car shows like this here. We have a good time with it. Jim, we were taking a look at your Nova, looking at the photo book, and I saw this really cute picture of this nice little boy on a tricycle next to this car. Who is that kid? That was me. You? Yeah. When? 1973. Wow. So the car was a year old. How old were you? I was five. Five years old? Yep. So what's the history with you and this car? My brother bought the car in 1973, and then um, he wanted to get a new family car in 1987, so he sold it to me. I've had it ever since. So he had it 73 to 87. It's been yours ever since. That's right. Yep. What did it look like when you picked it up from your brother? Oh, it was in still pretty good shape. It had a little rust around the wheel wells and stuff, typical stuff, but it was in pretty good shape because after 1975, he never drove it in a winter again. It sat in a barn for three years before he sold it to me. It didn't run at all for three years. It just was sitting in the barn. Jim, what have you done to the car since you've owned it then? Well, when I first bought it, I uh, had it fixed up and repainted once, and then I played with it a lot. Drag raced it up here all the time, broke four speeds out of it, just, you know, the typical stuff you do as a teenage kid with a car like this. So, um, but then uh, in 1998, I tore it down, tore it all apart, and then um, a friend of mine, he took it out in his shop, and 
redid all the body work and paint and everything on it and put it all back together for me and that was in 2004. So it's looked like this since 2004. What's on the uh, trunk? Uh, a pair of diamonds been painted on the trunk. I painted this set on myself but it's had diamonds on it since it was new in 1972. Jim, 1972 license plates on this thing. Are they the 1972 license plates? Yes, they are. These oh. plates were on the car in 1972. And my, my brother kept them, put them back in the envelope and kept them all these years. And, and coughed I them over to you? Put them, gave them back to me and I registered, they're legally registered to the car. What do you think as a little kid when your brother had this car? I just always loved this car. And I always dreamed about when I was a kid that I would get a Nova like my brother's maybe make it gold or black, you know, just to be like a bookend to his car. So when he offered me his car in 1987, there was no doubt that I wanted the car and I was going to keep it forever. And when I pass on, I'll, it'll go to my nephew. Yep. What does your brother think now? You know, here he passed this thing on to you in 87. You've redone it. What's he think now? He likes it. He likes to drive it every now and then when he goes to cruises with me. And he's glad that I got it. He's, he's afraid if I wouldn't have bought it, it might just still be sitting in the barn. Has he ever asked to sell it back? No, no. <laughs> he knows it has a good home. What would the answer be if he did? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brotherly love, Jim. <laughs> yep. Ah, the fine art of negotiation. He said he'd let it rot before he, he sold it for that. Yeah, and that's just about what he did. So. <laughs> <laughs> that lesson is next on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. World-class collector vehicles. That's what RK Motors Charlotte is all about. The finest in classic, muscle, and high-performance automobiles. The design and excellence of the 1930s and 40s. The chrome of the 1950s. The muscle of the 1960s and 70s, and much more. RK Motors is the one-stop shop to sell your car, add a new prize to your collection, or restore an old friend to past glory. Learn more about RK Motors Charlotte at rkmotorscharlotte.com. Now back to Cruisin', presented by RK Motors Charlotte. George is a guy who has done hundreds of cars throughout your entire life. You picked out a Ford Fairlane from 57 to redo, and it is fabulous. What is it about this car that made you think, yep, I want to take on this project? Uh, well, because I had, I had two of them when I was younger. And I found that one, and I wanted it restore it. But it looks like it just drove out of the showroom. Yeah, well, I took it all apart. I took the doors off, all the bolts and everything, and then redid it. And uh, the guy I know brought it back from California 13 years ago, and uh, he put it in his garage, and he died, and his wife sold it. called me and told me I could uh, come over and look at it. So I went over and looked at it and bought it and restored it. No hesitation about buying it. What no. did it look like at the time? Yeah. Didn't have no rust on it. Beautiful car when, you know, when I got it and everything, really. And that's the reason I wanted to restore it and put it back in the original. What was the toughest part of the restoration on this, George? Obviously not the body if there was no rust on it. The motor, I re had to redo that. Transmission, had to redo it. Had to pull all, the other part, all of it out and maybe start over again. But metal all the way around, trim, everything? Metal was perfect. There was no rust on it or nothing. Paint was all faded when I, when I got it. It was all dirty. So it was sitting in his garage for 13 years. Wow. So. Well, you know you did a good job with it when you decide you want to put it on your shirt. Yeah. That works out great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Frank, oftentimes we have to ask somebody, is this car original? I don't think I have to ask you about your DeSoto Fire Dome 8. That's an original car. Yes, it is. Well, I've known the car for probably 15 years. I tried to buy it, and a guy just wanted too much money, and I made him an offer, and he wouldn't take it, said he'd let it rot. And he said he'd let it rot before he sold it, it for that? Rot. Yeah, so, and that's just about what he did. So. <laughs> it sat and it rotted yeah. for about 15 years. Yeah, well, well it's not rotted, but it, you know, it deteriorated. Then how did you turn around and end up getting it? A friend of mine seen it setting uh, behind a machine shop, and he told me about it, and we went and checked it out, and that was it, and it was for sale again. So. Same guy owned it? No, uh, a buddy of his had ah, it. Ah, okay. 
was going to was going to do it for him or something. And decided to sell it. So. How long ago did you buy it, Frank? I've had this car about three months, three, wow. four to most, I think. And have you done anything to it yet? Uh, brakes and uh, changed oil. And that's it. That's it. How long? How long ago can you trace the history of this thing? Uh, well, the guy, the, the fellow by the name of Harry McCready, he's had it for about 40 years. Wow. And uh, he was the one that I tried to buy it from to begin with. Right. And but uh, that's that's how long I've you know the car's been in the area. Fire Dome is a Hemi motor, and it's a, the smallest, 276 cubic inches, and it's probably the first or second year they had the Hemis. And it's just, uh, I mean, it runs just like a new. Does it really? Car. Yeah, it just. And I real, I haven't done anything to the motor yet. So. Have you seen any more of these around? Nope. Ever? No, not wow. a wagon. I've seen four-door sedans and stuff, but never a wagon. And it has wood throughout the interior. The floor and the back is all wood, and the sides. And what kind of shape is it in, Frank? Good. Is it really? Yeah, good. real good. Because that would frighten me in a hurry if it weren't. Yeah, but, no, there's only two pieces of wood that I'm gonna have to replace. And, uh, what do you plan to do with it now, Frank? Drive it. Do you really? Yeah. You're gonna fix it up or you're gonna just drive uh, it? Maybe a little bit at a time, but I'm not gonna restore it or nothing. It would, you know, cost prohibitive to have this chrome done for me. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's probably $20,000 of chrome. So. Uh, yeah, that'd, that'd be an awful lot to put into a 52 DeSoto wagon. Yeah, but, it? you know, it's worth doing if you had the money to do it. But it runs great? Oh, it runs perfect. You love it? Yep, I and do. It, and it was a challenge that's become a reality for you. Here right. it is. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. It better be the crystal clear part of a restoration. And they will reproduce that glass to where nobody would know the difference. Under the Hood is next on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. RK Motors Charlotte wants your classic car. Let our consignment professionals take the aggravation out of the selling process for you. With an established international customer base, the RK Motors Charlotte consignment program has a 90% sell-through rate. Our top-notch marketing efforts have led to an average sale time of 87 days. We do the work, we do the marketing, we sell your classic for you at maximum value. Visit our website at rkmotorscharlotte.com. Under the Hood is presented by RK Motors Charlotte, specializing in the sale, build, and restoration of world-class collector vehicles. A critical part of any restoration, that stuff, the glass. And Mike Velick, the restoration manager here at RK Motors Restoration, it's a topic we've never covered before, but it's so critical and really kind of interesting as well. Right. Um, for instance, this particular car, We'd restored this car already for the customer. Great looking Torino. Good, wonderful car. You know, the customer's very happy with it. But while going through this, there are certain steps you have to take in putting it all back together and getting the glass right. Well, there was no aftermarket company that made, remade the glass for this particular model Torino. What it had happened is, you know, we were trying to keep everything as original as possible because of the sentimental value, just freshened and new. Well, Glass, since we couldn't find it, we decided we would use his regular glass. And when he got the car, he thought, eh, it's just not quite nice enough for this quality of a car. Okay. Because over time, we all have these old cars. Naturally. The screws start coming loose on your, your, your window fuzzies, or they create rust. Once that rust starts to grow on a screw head and it's sticking out a little bit and your fuzzy wears away, the glass goes down, the rust eh, scratches <laughs> it all up. Then what do you have? You have these nice vertical lines in your glass right. that just look terrible. And when you do a car to this quality and this standard, that does distract from the eye. Okay. So the customer said, let's go that next step. Since you can't find it aftermarket, what do we do? So we put our nose to the grindstone and just search and search, you search collectors. You go to uh, a lot of the old vintage Ford websites that people that collect these parts, you check them out, you'll go see what they have. We, we're lucky enough to find a Torino Cougar Superstore, a uh, place where some guy over the years has collected everything Cougar and Torino that you could imagine 
and he just happened to have a set of glass, new old stock. But you couldn't find reproduction glass for this car. Could not find wow. reproduction glass. For the most part, Jeff, you can always find a windshield. Let's face it, windshields get the abuse that they have to make a windshield for every car. It's gonna get a rock chip. It's gonna get windshield wiper marks. You know, your wiper falls off and your arm does a nice little scrape. Things like that happen. Mm -hmm. They take a lot more abuse being front of the car. So you found a reproduction Reproduction windshield. front windshield was no problem. And we always, almost every restoration we ever do, you always replace that glass, because you know what? You want, you want that want customer to feel good when he's sitting in there too. Right. You don't want to see a foggy, wiped up window. You want nice. And that windshield looks fabulous. And they were fine, but there's a difference. Reproduction glass, a lot of times, the markings will be different. Uh, there's always a marking in the glass area with who made it or the factory manufacturer. For instance, PPG was one of the big glass manufacturers back in the day. So here we've got our PPG stampings, but it's a modern stamping. Mm -hmm. Now when you go into the new old stock glass, as you see the new old stock stickers are still on it, and the manufacturer through Ford was the car light, and he's got his logo there, while the logo is also etched in the yep. glass. There's the etching you always see on, on Ford glass. You know, a lot of your more popular cars, and you know, the Mopars are real. They're hot right now. They're real hot right yep. now. They're, they're desirable for collectors. So, you know, aftermarket companies understand this too. You know, they follow these trends. They know what's going on. So, for instance, the 67 Charger that we redid here, um, factory glass in the car was so-so. In most cases, would be usable. Right. In this particular case, customer went nut and bolt, full frame up, ground up restoration, you know, every nut and bolt perfect, nothing untouched on the car. So you don't want to put that scratch glass in as we had talked about. Well, there are companies now that you send them either a picture or they send you a little document and you fill it out with every bit of information that is in that etched piece of glass mm -hmm. from the factory if you have them and they will reproduce that glass to where nobody would know the difference. Nice. Perfect etchings, perfect date codes. You fool the best of the best with a glass like that. They're available. NOS is always, if somebody wants the car perfect and correct, NOS is the way to go. And NOS is new old stock, new as you said, stock. which is old stock that's sitting around that hasn't sitting been used. Sitting around that's been yeah. never used, just sitting there new. So. If you can't find the reproduction glass, it's always always nice that it's available somewhere, sometime. And in our next Under the Hood, it's not just finding the glass, then it's making sure it's installed correctly. We'll go over that. Absolutely. Under the Hood is presented by RK Motors Charlotte, specializing in the sale, build, and restoration of world-class collector vehicles. Visit our website at rkmotorscharlotte.com. Automotive passion runs deep at RK Motors Restoration. Our master body paint and mechanical technicians have decades of award-winning experience restoring some of the world's finest collector cars. Flawless paint and bodywork, highly accurate interiors, engines that run better than new. Each restoration is completely documented and finished to award-winning Concours quality specifications. From project car to automotive perfection, visit rkmotorscharlotte.com to make it happen. World-class collector vehicles. That's what RK Motors Charlotte is all about. The finest in classic, muscle, and high-performance automobiles. The design and excellence of the 1930s and 40s. The chrome of the 1950s. The muscle of the 1960s and 70s, and much more. RK Motors is the one-stop shop to sell your car, add a new prize to your collection, or restore an old friend to past glory. Learn more about RK Motors Charlotte at rkmotorscharlotte.com. Now back to the Blue Suede Cruise at Summit Motorsports Park on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. Brian, a Falcon, everybody knows. What's the difference between a Falcon and a Falcon Futura? Well, you got three different ones. You got a Falcon, which is your basic model. 
you got a Futura, which is a step up, and then you got the Sprint, which has bucket seats and a center console and the chrome package under the hood. And, you know, there's a couple other specialty things, but this is actually a Falcon Futura, but turned into a Sprint. It's not a true Sprint, though. So you guys just got creative when it was put together. Right. How long have you had it, Brian? I had this car about two years now. And you found it where? A friend of mine, he was showing it. And then when I sold my other car, I told him, I said, I want to buy it. And he said, okay, no. So here I am. The other car, of course, the T bucket that's yeah, on your shirt right now. Yeah, the 23 T bucket. Keep your tears off of that from crying after selling that car. But you got that I right. like this one. I, I like the color. I like the look. What appealed? To, uh, what, what was it about this car that appealed to you? Actually, I wanted to get into an all-metal body car again, you know, because the T-Buckets are mostly all, all fiberglass, so I wanted to get something with doors and a roof and windows so I kept it, so I don't get wet no more. I got <laughs> real tired of getting wet. Yeah, I can certainly understand that. Uh, the Falcon was not exactly a, a hot rod back in its day. No, it was. And just this one's basic. been gussied up a little bit. Yeah, this one uh, two, it has an hour 289 in it, and uh, you know because most of these had six cylinders in it, and we put the battery in the trunk, and so it's more like it's more more like a race car now, but it's not a race car, but it's you know it's kind of a neat, neat little car. Now to take a look at it. I think it looks terrific. It looks nice. It looks well done. You have other plans. What are you thinking with this thing? Uh, not, not this weekend, but next weekend, I'm going to start blocking it all out, repainting the whole car again. So it's going to have a fresh paint job for next year. And you feel a need to do that? Why? Yeah, it just has a lot of little bumps and bruises in it that you know, over the years, because this paint job is already almost 15 years old. So it's time to get something freshened up. Same color? Uh, same color, it'll be the same stripes on it, it'll just be all new stuff. Well, that'll keep you busy, keep yeah. you from thinking about that tea bucket. Yeah, I gotta keep my kids away from it though then. <laughs> That's okay though. Good luck with the new project. Well, thank you. Hey, quiet down there, trying to do TV. Hot day here in Norwalk at Summit Motorsports Park, not only because of the temperature, but because in this case of the Monte Carlos going up and down the track. I'm Jeff Phelps. We'll see you next time on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. All right, fellas, take off. Ready? Here you go.